Video one, this is about blanching the spinach. So just from our local grocery store, we get the pound of spinach, which is 454 grams. I use my scale here in grams, and I divide about 226 grams each into two containers. I've already blanched these, which means basically just boiling them in salt water for 40 seconds. So what that does is it softens the stems. So you'll see here, I just set my kitchen timer to just count down. So usually you have to do this in, in four batches. So I'll take a good handful. Hands are very clean. Um, I'll wait till it just gets exactly 40 here. And then I'll take the first half or so. So two, one, 40 seconds. So I just drop that, take my spider here, kind of just tamp it down a little bit. Then pot lid, cover it. So I'm gonna take this out right at the top of the minute, but with about 10 seconds left, I'll go and just kind of push down the, the spinach in there and make sure everything gets sort of soaked. Because what you're trying to do is just make sure that these hard stems are no longer hard, they're soft. So 12, 11, 10, so right there, take this, push it down, just make sure that you're getting everything coated. And then it takes usually, it can take a few seconds to get this all out. So right at zero, I try to get this out as soon as quickly as possible. I'm going to separate that half from this half. Um, you know, you don't want to have too much sort of left over there because it will get really soggy. So you do want to get it all out. But I find that it takes, you know, don't don't stress over it. It never affects the final product if you have some that were in there for you know a minute and a half. So anyway, so this is blanching. Again, the purpose of this is to make sure that you get this finish nice and soft. Eventually, you're going to combine this with eggs and then mix it with your flour. So then, again, just I, I want to make sure that gets to a really nice boil like it is now before you put the next batch in, just so there's consistency in what that 40 seconds means when you're actually blanching it. Um, so I'll just wait to the top of the minute here and then just dump the rest of this in to the pot. I use this pot, even though we have fancier stainless steel cookware, I use this one because it gets a nice even boil. So there we go. The rest of this just gets put in. Give it a good tap down, make sure everything's saturated. I'll take this out in, you know, so I'm gonna get to about 30 seconds on the countdown here on my clock. It's at 42 now. I'll go and just give it a tap down again. Take it out, throw it here. Now what's the next step here after this is all out? is you've got to squeeze as much water from these as possible. Now, when I first started doing this, I was obsessive about it. Like I would go and actually get every ounce of water out. I don't do that anymore because I just put end up putting a little bit less egg in to sort of account for the moisture and it turns out great. So here we go, we're blanching. So spinach dough, by the way, is the best dough. It's got like a smoother texture, it's tastier. Kids actually love it. And you end up getting this pound of spinach in your pasta doughs. So, I would highly recommend doing the blanching and doing the spinach. Uh, this is kind of our standard dough. We make this more often than we make normal dough. So anyway, so next step, so that's that's fine. I'll just turn this off. We're obviously gonna wash that pot because it's that, that, you can see that green spinach water. So next step is, I'll, I'll spare you the video. We'll be actually tapping this down with paper towels. And you know, I try to get it so it's 95% of the moisture is out of this, so you end up with sort of like a ball. Then I'm gonna combine that with equal art. So this is about 226 grams per these batches. I'll combine that with about, it's supposed to be equal part eggs, but because of the extra moisture in there, I'm not being obsessive. I'll probably put about 210 uh, grams of egg in there. And then you blend it. I'm gonna make two batches and you mix that with a pound of flour. And that's, uh, I'll make a video for that. But that's basically what you're doing. So this is step one. Again, I'll spend maybe 15 minutes trying to get these as dry as I can without it being, you know, over the top. But that's it. So this is the first step in making your spinach dough. When you have somebody making you pasta, you have to take it on faith that they have very clean hands because there's a lot of touching of what you're going to eat. So here's my technique I figured on getting the water out of the spinach because otherwise you gotta kind of surround it with paper towels and squeeze it out. I don't like to do that. So what I tend to do is take my hand and I'll squeeze it and get the water out onto this pan. And sort of, it's a process. It'll take me about 10 or 15 minutes per 
these two sort of batches of spinach, but then I mop it up from the pan. So I'm just gonna do that again. It'll probably take about 10 minutes still. I don't want there to be any obvious signs of moisture. Again, when I first started doing this, I would obsess and like I wouldn't, these would be bone dry, but I found that's just not necessary. So you don't need to spend half an hour or 40 minutes per of these things sort of, you know, getting every drop out. But you don't, you don't want any obvious moisture on it. When you push it, you don't want it sort of to bleed as much as it is now. So again, I'd say probably 10 minutes from now, I'll have it to, you know, I'll kind of alternate on the two, but I'll have them both to a level where they're ready to go the next time. So it, it's uh, something for me to say this as an obsessive compulsive, but this is good enough. So you sort of get an idea where they're not bleeding moisture when you pat them. Um, really no need to go any more than that. Uh, but you end up with these two pellets. So the next step is we're gonna take our blender here. And making pasta, by the way, your scale is your friend. So everything gets measured out really precisely. So what I'm gonna do is take these two pellets independently, mix them with about 210 grams. Usually it would be equal parts, but I go a little bit less to account for the moisture that's left in here. But we're gonna, we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna puree it basically. So I put it on, there's like a smoothie setting on this. This is kind of a high-end blender. It's a smoothie setting, which is like a minute and a half of kind of pureeing. So that will give it a very even sort of green egg and spinach texture. And then that's ultimately what I'm gonna pour into my pasta dough um, and mix it to make the dough. So next step, um, I'll show you after it's, it's done, but it will be the mixture of the eggs that are perfectly measured and our kind of spinach pellets here. Lo and behold, with a little bit of experience, I knew which eggs to pick. So we ended up with exactly 210. So that's actually perfect. Um, we'll blend that now with one of the spinach. So we're gonna pour this directly into my blender. Boom. I like to be sort of, make sure we get every drop of everything for the, so the measurements work out here. But there's that. I'm gonna take one of my two, these are equal. Pop that in there. Then, like I said, um, what I'm gonna do is just take our good friend, the blender. Um, if I can find here, this is okay. Yeah, it's good to have a nice blender. Let me do this. And then, like I said, there's this smoothie setting, which I just find I do start. This video is brought to you by LaCroix. Um, so take my word for it after a minute and a half. That's going to be a nice, smooth, even mixture. The next step is to weigh out my flour. And uh, we're going to basically mix that into the flour, make our doughs, wrap them, and let them All right, so the techniques that I'm using today were uh, learned from a book by a guy named Evan Funky, who has a restaurant in LA, who studied in Bologna. Um, big kind of badass tattoo guy. Um, super cool, but it's the book's called American Spoglino, which is the name for a pasta maker. There's two pieces of equipment that sort of recommends. You can go fancy, but I did what he suggested. As I went to Lowe's, had a you know just a plywood board cut from 36 by 24, sanded it down with 180 then 320 um, green sandpaper, and that's called it. Um, I think it's taglier, um, basically a board for working your pasta. And then the other piece of equipment, which actually I keep in my office, just because I bring it out when necessary here, is called a mattarello. And I know that's a terrible, I don't speak Italian, so forgive my accent. But basically it's a rolling pin. Now you can go online and buy these for you know, hundreds of dollars, but basically I just went and got a dowel. I think it's 34 inches or so. Um, basically that's what you're gonna need to roll out your pasta. And then again, just same thing, 180 grain, 320 grain, sanded it down so it was smooth. These are really two of your main, uh, you know, implements you're gonna to need to make pasta. Fence scraper, incredibly important. Get one that has the, the measurements on it because you're gonna need that. Um, then I have some just other stuff in my, here. So I don't sift, I get really specialty flour here. Um, I bought it in huge batches. Uh, 20 pound batches, I've got two of them. It's zero, zero um, by Caputo. Um, 
pasta and gnocchi flour, super fine grain. You can run it and sift it additionally through this before you, you use it. I don't do that. If I ran a Michelin restaurant, I probably would. Um, and I don't think it really makes a difference. Then I've got these cutting wheels, fluted. I've got some other sort of just little implements that are used for different pasta shapes. You've got one for ravioli. You've got one, so if I want to kind of smooth the edges with the fluting, I do that. Um, just, you know, these are kind of, then I've got my, this, this is absolutely essential because you can't have pasta without grating your, your cheese, generally Parmigiana. Um, then, you know, I, I mentioned this, this was used in the blanching. That's important. I'll find it's probably in the dishwasher. We've got a pasta grabber as well. But again, you don't need a whole lot. I'm going to need a fork as well for this next step. This is how actually you begin to mix the egg and spinach into the dough. Um, but next step is I'm going to actually weigh out 454 grams of the pasta flour. Easy as can be, you just take, I use a, you know, one cup, measuring cup. Boom. I try to be as precise as possible with this, although I do notice that the, the measurements that Evan Funk gave are a little heavy on the flour. I still kind of use them, but I end up having to sort of massage it a little bit by adding a little bit more water to my hands while I'm actually making the dough. So, you know, I'm gonna go the recommended pound here, which is 454. Um, so just, again, I try to be as precise as possible. So I'm actually gonna get it to 454 eventually. There we go. Um, so that's that measured out. Another thing I do is that, just so I don't have to keep this big bin of flour, I do take about that much extra flour that will be used throughout the process of, of, uh, sort of rolling out the pasta. So I just keep a little extra to the side. But that's it, so I'm gonna take this. First thing you do, you pour out your pound of flour, kind of try to make an even mound. Now what you want to do is sort of the fun part of walk, working with the flour because it feels really, you know, texturally, tactilely, it feels amazing. So you kind of, you know, just make a little well here and that's where you're going to pour in your mixture and you're going to start to actually mix it in with a fork until it gets sort of saturated and there's no sort of moisture left that's sort of in a, in a pool. Then I use the bench scraper and kind of start to, to cut it up like you would biscuits. So you sort of mix it in and make a ball out of it. So that's the next step. Again, this is sort of the fun part. I'll see if I can get Riley to hold the camera and, uh, and show you. 